So let's first discuss about the microtubules. Summary of like simple important properties of microtubules. Microtubules are made up with protein tubulin. Okay, in eukaryotes, it's made up with tubulin. In case of prokaryotes, uh, we also see structures resembling uh, the microtubules. For example, in eukaryotes, we have sperm flagella. Similarly, in prokaryote some bacteria also possess flagella, but bacterial flagella is made up with a protein known as flagellin, but in eukaryotes the flagella of sperm made up with tubulin, okay, that is the difference. Structure is hollow tubes, wall consists of 13 columns of tubulin molecules. So basically this tubulin molecules will arrange themselves, 13 tubulin molecules like that arrange themselves and that way it is going to form a hollow cylinder structure and that gives the strength. Diameter 25 nanometer with 15 nanometer lumen. Uh, made up protein is tubular in main functions, maintenance of cell shape, motility of a cell, chromosome movement during cell division and organelle movements inside the cell. Because these microtubules will form path inside of the cell, inside of a cell so that organelles and other cargo proteins can be transported just like you know there are motor proteins who has this cargo on the top and they move and walk like that is a molecular walk resembling molecular walk. Uh, on the surface of microtubule path. That is why we are calling it as a, helping in the organelle movement or cargo movement. So, let us first start talking about microtubule filament, I mean microtubule structures. We do not call it filament because it is thicker, the thickest among the cytoskeleton. So, what is microtubule and uh, what is the structure of microtubule? You can clearly see plenty of pictures uh, provided here. Let me give you a simple idea. We have already talked about the basic constituent of microtubule. We call it uh, it is made up with tubulin, remember tubulin protein and basically made up with tubulin dimer. There are two types of tubulin, alpha tubulin and beta tubulin, beta and alpha, beta is denoted with red color, alpha is denoted with blue color here. So, beta and alpha tubulin together will form tubulin dimer and the tubulin dimer will be in contact with one another top to bottom. You can see the contact is top to bottom, beta on top alpha on bottom that way top to bottom arrangement is there while they make a top view of 13 different microtubule uh, 13 different tubulin proteins together. So basically 13 protofilament is a typical cylinder you can see that diameter of 23 nanometer and this 13 proto 13 different tubulin they arrange together. So basically they first arrange themselves like a sheet they form a sheet like structure like this and then they will fold, they will fold the sheet to form a cylinder. So, it is forming a hollow cylinder okay? and there is a plus end which is fast growing end and there is a minus end slow growing end. Okay? The, plus, uh, the, the fast end or plus end uh, with beta tubulin at its end and the slow growing end has a alpha tubulin at its end. So, if I draw this is plus end beta tubulin is there and minus alpha end alpha tubulin is there. Okay? So, this is the growing end and this, this is this is the minus end, but shrinking edge is also shrinking edge is also the same plus end. So, basically microtubule has this role of growing and shrinking from the plus end only, never shrink from the minus end, but the minus end is the place where it is associated with uh, the alpha at the end and GDP is associated with it, where in the growing end GTP is associated with it. So, tubulin is associated with GTP and the moment tubulin is associated with GTP, it is present in the active form or growing form and from that terminal the, the microtubule must grow and it grows from that end. And on the opposite pole where the GTP gets hydrolyzed into GDP and PI, then GDP gets dissociated and from that site the microtubule do not grow. Okay? Microtubule form network coming from the microtubule organizing center which is usually the centrosome or centriole. Okay. Centriole is forming from the microtubule organization because that is the place from where the microtubules are originated and spread across the cell and it also forms cilia and flagella and spindle fibers during mitosis. So basically you can see the structures here where we have beta alpha, beta alpha like that. So beta at the end, so this will be plus end, GTP associated end and alpha this will be minus end and GDP. Associated, associated end. So, basically here the GTP once hydrolyzed to GDP and PI then this subunit dissociate like a spill off like this start dissociating like that because the moment GTP gets hydrolyzed into GDP uh, there is a change in backbone angle 
Okay, as a result of this change, the tubulin structure is destabilized, the tubulin dimer structure destabilized, and they fall off, peel off from the entire polymer. Now, one very important concept is uh, the effect which is known as trade milling. Okay, we call them trade milling effect. Now, what is trade milling effect here? We are going to see how exactly microtubule is maintaining its dynamics. We also call them microtubule dynamics. Okay. So, what is microtubule dynamics? Microtubules can grow and it can shrink from that plus end. How exactly microtubule can grow and shrink from the same end? See, if the rate of polymerization is faster than the rate of GTP hydrolysis, then microtubule must grow. So, here what we can see the rate of polymerization increasing than the hydrolysis of GTP. So, microtubule is continued to grow. The black means beta, green means alpha in this picture and we can clearly see the microtubule is being growing. Okay? And they also have a protein called CAP, CAP which is associated with the microtubule there. Okay? The microtubule will grow, it contains GTP CAP at the end. So, this GTP cap at the end allows the microtubule to grow in that direction. So, it is growing in the front direction in this picture. But now, if the rate of GTP hydrolysis is faster than the rate of polymerization. So, less polymerization is taken place, more hydrolysis of GTP taken place. So, GTP cap is lost. There is no GTP. There is no capping of GTP that the, the black total black structure means there is a GTP cap. So, there is no GTP cap as a result of which the protofilament containing GDP as I mentioned if it contains GDP there is a change in the angle of its axis as a result of which there is a bend in this protofilament and the tubulin dimer start falling off from that same end. So, earlier it was growing from this plus end now it was shrinking from the same plus end. So, growing and shrinking from same end. Remember that growing and shrinking from same end. So, there is only one thing that is GTP hydrolysis, GTP hydrolysis less than or greater than what polymerization. Okay? So, if GTP hydrolysis is less than polymerization, then it will grow and GTP hydrolysis is faster than polymerization, it will shrink this is what you should write down and put it in your brain. So, what is the remodeling of actin we are talking about? The fact that microtubules are not fixed means that the cells can remodel their shape. Plant cells and other cells also remodel their shape because they are not fixed. They can grow and shrink from one end. So, obviously, if you have multiple multiple microtubule, we can grow and shrink in different directions and we can change our shape. Right? The cell can change their shape. So, this graph Although many people say it seems complicated, but it is actually easy. You can easily understand write it right now. You can see here what we can see the time after salt addition and what we can clearly see is that how exactly the microtubule arrangement and microtubule growth is, is observed. There is a lag phase or nucleation phase where multiple tubulin uh, molecules need to be added together and they stick to each other to start what is known as a nucleation. So, once nucleation is there, oligomer is created, nucleation is formed, then growing of the actin filament continues here. Okay? Now, who will dictate whether the actin filament will grow or, or shrink? Obviously, the GTP hydrolysis must be low, polymerization must be fast in order for this uh, in order to grow. Right? So, here concentration of monomers at the steady state, we call it at a steady state, CC is a concentration of tubulin monomers at a steady state. Steady state is the state where the polymerization rate and uh, so, growing filament at this moment polymerization state is fast than the hydrolysis of GTP state. And once it reaches, what is the steady state? Steady state is the time where the growth of uh, where the polymerization of acting uh, microtubule and the hydrolysis of GTP at this moment equal. So, if both are equal, so we call it equilibrium phase. Equilibrium phase is the phase where equilibrium phase is reached when the concentration of monomers are present at a steady state. So, monomers present at a steady state, so the same number of act, uh, tubulin, same number of uh, tubulin binds uh, for polymerization, same number of tubulin comes out 
from the polymer as a result of GTP hydrolysis and both rates are equal and the moment both rates are equal we call it at uh, reaching at a steady state. So, no further growth, no further shrinking. So, basically the length of the microtubule remains the same but it can grow and shrink, it can grow and shrink. So, maintaining the same length by growing and shrinking all the time. That is known as the remodeling, uh, that is known as the effect of microtubule dynamics and it is very very important that uh, the cell continues to have the feature because with the help of this feature the cell can spread the microtubules and it can change its shape when needed at very crucial situations. Now, what are the microtubule functions? We have already mentioned microtubules participate in a wide variety of cell most involved in the motion uh, because microtubules as I mentioned creates the path on top of which the motor proteins with the help of cargo and organelle can move. They determine the position of membrane enclosed organelles. Obviously, the organelles are generally what we uh, generally draw a cell nucleus. Let us say I draw a mitochondria here, I draw a mitochondria here. Now, many people understand these organelles are present in their specific locations. No, the cytosol is like an ocean, and everything that is present in the cytosol can move from one place to the other place. So, basically, it is not an ocean, we can say it is a city and there are roads. And let me take a different color here. Uh, it is a city and there are different roads. Uh, let us say there is one road, this is uh, another road, this is another road. Another. So, these are all roads and the roads are created uh, with uh, microtubules and there are motor proteins uh, which can attach the organelle and it can move from one place to the other. Let us say this, this mitochondria can move to here, this place, this mitochondria can move here, this mitochondria can move here. So, all these organelles can move from, from one place to the other place inside of the cell. This kind of movements are possible due to the presence of the structure that is microtubule. And the migration of chromosomes during mitosis and meiosis, yes, the segregation of chromatids and we know this picture very well that we have this kind of structure in the kinetochore core in the center and we have microtubules, uh, structure of microtubules holding and attaching to the kinetochore, core and these are the plus end of the microtubule. So, this plus end can grow and shrink. Uh, so, as they shrink, they will pull the sister chromatid uh, apart from each other and that kind of that, that also is a very important job to do during cell division in order to separate, in order to produce the equal number of chromosomes in both the daughter cell. So, that is what is really important, that is what the functions of microtubule or the thickest cytoskeleton element that is available. And one more thing that I want to share before closing this and that is the uh, different drugs that we can use, different drugs that we use uh, as a microtubule stabilizer and destabilizer. I do not know whether you can hear, uh, whether you can see uh, the writing here because it is uh, darker in image, but let me explain it for you. Drug name and the effect of the drug. Now, generally as I mentioned that the microtubules are very important and crucial structures. So, if the microtubules are destabilized, if the microtubules are not working properly, that means the cell division will not be done properly. So, there are drugs to inhibit the formation and association of microtubules in order to prevent the cancer, right. So, that is why it is important uh, to understand the different drug name and their effect. So, start with colchicine number one, colchicine inhibits polymerization via microtub or depolymerization of the microtubule, it allows the depolymerization of microtubule. Second thing, demicolcine, demicolcine inhibits polymerization, again same via depolymerization. Third is nocodazole, nocodazole inhibits polymerization, again via depolymerization. Fourth, Paclitaxel stimulate polymerization. Now, Paclitaxel is only drug that we are talking about would stimulate polymerization and rest of the three that we have discussed inhibits polymerization. Vinblastine, Vinblastine inhibits polymerization, Vincristine inhibits polymerization, but the inhibition of polymerization by Vinblastine and Vincristine is different than colchicine, demicolcine or nocodazole because colchicine, demicolcine uh, colcine and uh, nocodazole all of them they cause depolymerization of the microtubule while vinblastine and vincristine causes crystallization of tubulin. So, as a result of the crystallization the tubulin cannot have the dynamic nature that allows it to form microtubule and grow and shrink microtubule. So, that feature is lost and vinorelvin yeah, also inhibit the polymerization via tubulin crystallization. So, all these three are uh, all these three at the end uh, these three they are doing the same and polymerization stimulation is only done by 
paclitaxel and rest of all of them actually causes the polymerization to halt or causing uh, the depolymerization with some sort of machinery. So, ultimately the goal is to prevent the polymerization or prevent the functions or dynamic nature of the microtubules in order to prevent the transformation of a normal cell into a cancer cell. Out and it gets to know something new from this video. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to our channel to get more videos like that. Thank you. Bye.